Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Lethem St. Mark's Church. Thank you for joining us and being part of our online service here as we worship God together in our homes and in the different settings that we find ourselves. We hope you've had a good week. We hope that God has blessed you and helped you, that as you have figured out what it looks like to follow Jesus in these challenging circumstances, that you have had some good times and probably some challenging times. But whatever it is, we're glad that you're with us. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is a place of rest, a place where our souls can find the rest that Almighty God promises for us. We're looking again at Mark's Gospel and we're thinking about a very key passage where Jesus asks the disciples, who do you say I am? And we're thinking about identity. We're thinking about the importance of Jesus' identity and the identity then that we get from following him and why that is truly life-defining, whether we're a young person or an older person. So we'll come back later on and I will see you then as we look at this great passage but enjoy the service, enjoy the worship as we come together. Okay, we'll see you soon. Bye. confession of Christ. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. Je Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. Jesus predicts his death. 
He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. But whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Amen. And thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. perfecter of our faith, the bread of life, beloved Son of God, chief cornerstone, redeemer, our rock, the good shepherd, I am, king of kings, an indescribable gift, the lamb of God, light of the world, lord of all, mediator, our hope, the door, the way, the word, the resurrection and the life, the Messiah, Saviour, Son of Man, Christ. Wow, what a wonderful list. And that is only some of the names Jesus is known by. I sometimes think it's good to focus on things and it's really good to focus on 
Jesus names who he was, who he is. Let us pray. Father God, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for being who you are, our amazing Saviour and Lord of all. Thank you, Lord, that you so willingly gave up everything in heaven to come to this earth as a vulnerable little baby, that you would grow into a man, the son of man. You knew you would suffer, that you would be rejected, then killed, and yet you still came. Thank you, Lord, for your unconditional love for your people, for this world, and for being the bridge between us and the Father. We are sorry, Lord, that we take this truth for granted sometimes, and we're sorry that we turn our backs on you when we shouldn't. We're sorry, Lord, that we let you down. Help us, Lord, to look to you in all things and show the love of Jesus to others round about us, our families, friends, work colleagues, neighbours. Help us to be brave in sharing the gospel, Lord. We pray, Lord, for teachers, classroom assistants and school staff as they start their first full week back in school after being closed for many months due to COVID-19. Thank you for the dedication of teachers and staff over the whole of lockdown and we pray that all schools would be a safe environment for our children and staff and that you would enable them all to do their jobs to the best of their abilities under difficult circumstances. Be also Lord with the people of Lebanon who are dealing with this horrendous explosion that's happened in Beirut. Be with the Lebanese people whose, whose loved ones have died, who have lost their homes, who cannot find their loved ones. We pray that you would be with all of their emergency services as they deal with the aftermath of this explosion. Be with their government leaders in all they have to deal with and we pray for this country to get all the help it needs from the international community. Thank you Lord that you are the light of this world. Be our light among the darkness. Help us all to look to you in the coming week, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hi, and welcome back. Thank you to those who have taken part and helped lead us to this point where we can reflect and think upon God's word and what it means for our hearts today. Identity. It is a huge issue. And we could say that, particularly in the Western culture, there are many people suffering from what we could call an identity crisis. There's a lot of angst and anger out there around gender, around sexuality, around sex, to do with identity. People making a lot of noise and asking others to accept how they would view themselves and how the societies around the world should change in relation to that. And it's interesting that when you pick away it's what lies behind all of it, and you hear the individuals involved in, in these and, and in other things as well, what you find out is that at the bottom of it is people trying to figure out who they are and where they fit in. Are they valued? Are they loved? Are they cared about? Are they cared for? And in all of that, we can truly see that individuals made in the image of God and yet spoiled by sin, are trying to figure out what it means to be a human being. The story today is about people trying to figure out who Jesus is. Jesus is the Son of God. We know that because we've read to the end of the story. We're way ahead of where the disciples were on that day. And we know that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Christ. He is the Anointed One, the Chosen One of God. But back then they were trying to work out who he was. And, you know, by asking and laying questions out for people, then we can figure out what they think who we are. Now, if you and I had to do a little survey and ask people who we are, what, we, what we're about, you know, what signals, what messages we're giving out about our identity, it would be really interesting to see what it is they would come up with. Our identity is put together by lots of different aspects. You know, it is to do with our gender, it's to do... Um, with our work, it's to do with our ethnicity, it's to do with um, our friendship groups, who our family are, um, where we stay, where we live, what school. It's a very, very complex and layered thing, identity. But in all of that, there are things that people don't know about us. And there are secrets that we all keep. 
that actually, if people knew, would truly make our identity different. Now, that's not all bad, because a lot of the times it is modesty, it is humility that keeps us from truly saying who we are and giving the world a great shock that we are much more than we seem to be. But for Jesus, this was a real moment where he was asking them, based upon what they had already learned about him, about who he was. Now, Jesus wasn't uh, boasting and he wasn't asking people to, to take a stab in the dark here to give him an ego boost. It was important for them to begin to work out who Jesus truly was. They had seen so much up until this point. They'd seen miracle after miracle, heard the very word of God coming from the mouth of Jesus. And now he is asking them at this point, who do you say I am? And the interesting thing again is, is that their answer, although correct through Peter, is also not a full answer. Because we know that as the passage goes on to say that Peter was very upset with Jesus when Jesus suggested that the cross, his moment in history, would have to happen and Peter couldn't accept that. So the identity that Jesus had, had got from Peter was incomplete. And that's really interesting for all of us, isn't it? Because we're all on that journey of working out and finding out who Jesus truly is. We, yes, we may know that he is the Son of God, he is the Messiah, he is the Christ, but there are times when we know things but don't actually believe them because they just lie dormant in our lives until a moment, a happening, and they awaken within us and we learn more. And again, that's part of what it means to be a learner, a disciple of Jesus, to continually learn. And we do that with all aspects of life. In our relationships with our friends and our families, we learn out more about them and they about us. But for Jesus, the identity question was critical because even to this very day within the different religions that are not Orthodox and Christian, they come up with a different conclusion that we would with Jesus. I saw an interesting photograph on the internet the other day and it was a group of Muslim men who had a t-shirt on that said, we love Jesus, which was a great thing to see. I thought it was really, really amazing. But if we go to our Muslim friends and ask them, well, who is Jesus to you? they would come up with a very different conclusion to what we would come up with. They do not accept that Jesus is the Son of God. They believe that he is a minor prophet compared to Muhammad. And that is, in a liberal democracy, a wonderful thing that people have the opportunity to, to explore and think about these things. Um, but it's a different conclusion from what we would come up with. And many other people within the different aspects of different faiths would always have a place for Jesus, but it wouldn't be the place at the top table. And really, this is where Christianity begins to separate out from everywhere else. And it's not about superiority. It's about if Jesus is who he says he is, then everything changes. If Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, everything changes. If Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah, then everything changes. If Jesus died on a cross for me, then everything changes. Because it's not about the world, although it is about the world. It's not about those who lived 2,000 years ago. It's about me. And therefore, my identity is impacted by what Jesus has said and done. Because if he is the Son of God, if what he has done is so amazing that there's no sell-by date on it, that it is truly eternal, that the effects of it are as powerful today as they were then, then what he has done will impact everyone and everything from that moment on. The disciples really struggled to work out, not that Jesus was the Messiah, but what kind of Messiah he was. But everyone was. There's no one who really got that right as they walked with Jesus 2,000 years ago. And it wasn't until really after the resurrection, and even after that, Pentecost, you could say, that they truly began to understand who Jesus was. And you know, that's okay because, help my Bob, we've all got processors within our brains. Some are process things very quickly and others take a long time to get there and everything in between, trying to figure it out. So let's just step back from this at the moment and, and explore it from our perspective and think about it with regards to what's happening in our own lives today. So who am I? And that's a question I am asking of you. 
Who are you? How would you identify yourself? How do you self-identify yourself with regards to um, the different aspects of your life? The interesting thing I think for all of us is, is that some things are just given to us. We don't have an option. They are, they, are, they are thrust upon us. And therefore, we're given labels, if you want to think of it in that way, but, but layers of identity. Now, some of it's good and some of it's not so good. The question is, I guess, for us as Christians is, when we get to that moment in our lives, when we realise and make that commitment to Christ, what changes? Are things so radically different that we don't even identify who we were compared to who we are now? Well, the scriptures do talk about being in Christ as like being a new creation. Now, that's very positive, isn't it? Because I guess for all of us, that transformation is what we long for. In Galatians 5, uh, there's, there's two lists, isn't there? There's a list of that which is wrong in our lives, and it talks about disunity and anger and all sorts of moral failings. And yet it, it also says, but be led by the Spirit, which talks about the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, long-suffering, and, and all the stuff that goes with that. And so in a way, that aching in all our hearts is to be in the second list and not the first list. And so undoubtedly that when we receive the Spirit of God into our lives, we are transformed, we are changed. And what comes with that is the gift of God. Someone's described it as though, imagine someone coming up to your door at Christmas morning with armfuls of presents that just keep coming. And that's what some people like to picture God as, is coming with his Spirit and bringing all these gifts into our lives. And so in that sense, yes, it is quite radical. And yes, we do change, but the change is a spiritual change. And it's a change from within that then reaches to the outward part of our life and our identity changes. And it changes because God, who has made all things, actually comes and lives within us and transforms our lives. Our identity changes. It changes in the eyes of God as well, because before we gave our hearts and lives to Christ, there is a sense in which the Bible talks about being almost enemies of God, being far away from God. And yet when we do make that comprehensive and that wonderful decision, it talks of becoming children of God, heirs of God. And there's great lists in the, Bibles of, in the Bible of all the things that we become when we take on that identity as followers of Jesus. And that is a great thing for all of us. And as the world swirls around and as kind of Western cultures come and change and move, we come back to scripture, to the solid foundation of that. Who am I? Well, who I, who am, who I am is based upon who Jesus is, the eternal son of God who doesn't change, whose love is for all people in all circumstances, at all times, through receiving him by faith. An enormous thing, and yet transformational. And I would look back over my own life and say, it is God's grace and his love through his word and spirit that has shaped and changed my identity completely. I'm no longer wee Jim Stewart, who was Willie and Hazel's son, youngest of four boys, who went to Airdrie Academy and did this and, you know, left school and worked in a butcher shop and then worked in a DSS and... And, and all of these things, they're part of my story. But actually, my identity is who I am in Christ. I am anchored in that. And so my story will change, but my identity will not change. Jesus asked the question, who do you say I am? What would you answer that as? And don't let that frighten you, it's not a test. But it's a good point and marker in the sand today for you to sit back and think, well, who is Jesus to me? And of course, what we mustn't do, which Peter did, is exclude the cross. You see, Jesus was a crossless Christ for Peter. He hadn't got what sort of Messiah Jesus was going to be. And you know, friends, we cannot extrapolate. Why would we the cross from the story of Jesus. It is the centre of it all. It is the supreme act of God's love for humanity, for you 
and for me. It is the ultimate act to say, well, who is God? This is God who hangs on a cross to pay the price for our sin, to bring us back to God, to grant us eternal life. The supreme act of God in Christ. And the identity of God is completely revealed for the whole world to see. As the Apostle John would write, God is love. And greater love has no one than this, that someone would lay down their lives, their life for their friends, which Jesus did for us. Who do you say I am? Well, you are the son of God. But what do you say? What does your life say? What do your words say? What's the message you're telling the world about who Jesus is? So as we come to this week and as we go forward, May the grace of God continue to shape us, the love of God transform us, and the word of God be the very breath and life within us that as we go forward and learn more about who Jesus is, we also tell the world more about who Jesus is and what he has done for the whole world and for those whom we love as well. Have a great week, folks. God bless you. And um, we're going to be keeping going with these for a wee bit longer. We're not quite there with regards to opening church, which is a great sadness, but we're keeping an eye on it and we'll let you know as soon as we know. Okay, God bless. Bye.